Happy Monday night. I'm Molly Sanyor. This is Thorn of Molly, episode 66. And thank y'all for all of your clay questions. I'm so excited to start a new body of work with y'all and get through some of these questions. So thank you. Tonight, cheers. Happy Monday. I love a Monday. Thanks for tuning in. Episode 66. I'm going to make a body of work to make more of these because I really enjoyed, I actually made these to hang right here, which maybe they could now that I have dried um, eucalyptus in them. At first I was trying to grow plants and with my kiln running, it just kills everything. But I love these and I only made two for myself. So I'm going to make more to share with the world. Hopefully y'all will want some as well. And then I'm also going to start making a new batch of cylinders. But first, one of the questions that came in tonight, how to make sets, how do you make repeats? She's back, oh my gosh, thank y'all for tuning in. Happy Monday night. I'm also coming to y'all live from Richmond, Virginia. I know that y'all are coming in from all over. Sometimes putting the bat on is the hardest part. And somebody asks, Studio Must, if you got yourself a wheel, I think that you also need to get yourself some bats. All right, so. I have started, because I want to make a batch or a series of these wall planters, I like to throw this circular part. And because I want a batch, I went ahead and measured out all two pounders. So if you want repeats or a set, start by measuring out your clay. And then I'm going to use like this bat is going to be my guideline. I'm going to take it all the way out to the edge of the bat. And you know what? This might be enough for two. So the first one's kind of a wash. I weighed out maybe eight two-pound balls of clay to have a set. So we'll just see what this one looks like. This is the first one. And then I'll base all the others off of this one. But again, my idea here is I'm going to cut up and down. I'm going to center it, which there was a question about getting a form that looks like an elephant's trunk when you're coning up. And I think what you're talking about is I call it the crater. Lots of terminology for everything. And basically, when you're coning up, if you're coning it up and it's not a cone, like this is flat, it's not a cone, anytime you cone it up and it's not a cone, you're gonna get the elephant trunk or a crater. So for example, if I were just to start to cone this up, every time, is that the elephant trunk that you're talking about? I think that's the elephant trunk that you're talking about. I call it a crater. If you cone up and down and it's flat, you're gonna get an elephant trunk. I think I'm gonna start using elephant trunk. Crater, elephant trunk, which leads to an air bubble every time. So when you're coning up and down, the key is to keep a cone. Big cone, little cone. Big cone, little cone. So from here, I would just stop. Don't finish coning all the way to the top because then you're literally going to make an air bubble. As soon as you notice an issue, just fix it. Such is life. So I have an issue. Stop, fix it, get my cone back. And then I can, I can cone up and down all day long, as long as I have a cone. So I hope that helped the um, elephant trunk issue. I can't see if the comment, I think the comments might be frozen, but I see, all I see is my nephew Frank, this is my last one. Rotate, rotate. So if you are just tuning in, it's Monday night, I'm Molly Sanger, coming to you live, Richmond, Virginia. I'm a high school ceramics teacher, I teach beginners, I'm teaching virtually. I just want to see if, if I can just swipe up. Yes, oh my gosh, guys, wow, okay. Somehow those comments got stuck. I apologize if I totally missed y'all, but heart eyes right back. Y'all know I love an emoji. So thank you for all those positive emojis. Um, so I'm so excited to make this new body of work. Uh, tonight, Monday night, she's Molly Sanier. Oh my gosh. So I'm just going to, what I'm thinking of is I'm going to open all the way to the wheel and pull it out and make a ring. And I did measure this to be two pounds. So I can recreate, again, a series or a body of work. So I'm just keeping my hands connected. I should be pulling. So I'm trying to go as wide as I can, but having enough to make a wall, water. So there we go. And then I'm going to pull it up. And then here is the fun part, is creating and thinking about the finish that's going to show um, like what's gonna hang on the wall is against the back, but the part I'm looking at is what I'll see on the video. Your voice in my head, rotate, 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 has helped so much, yes! Rotate, 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 slow release. Don't forget the slow release, because you can rotate, 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 and then just flick it off because you're excited, and then you get the wobble. So rotate, 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 slow 
leaves. So now I can just clean this up, which I don't really need to, because it's kind of satisfying to see that get cleaned up. Yes, little Frank, we need to um, get some, some merch going. We need to get some merch. I want rotate, rotate, rotate. Yes, we need t-shirts. Rotate, 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 slow release. Sign it like you're famous. Who doesn't love clay? Yeah, all the things. Okay, so I've opened it up. Now I'm thinking about my overall thickness. What's against the bat is gonna be against the wall. So I really don't need it super thick, so I'm just feeling the thickness there. And then, now I'm just making sure that the walls are evenly thick. Vertical, just vertical. Get my cylinder first. Slow release, get this water out. You need to be a baller, Molly. I played basketball for one season in high school, my senior year. And I scored two points the entire season. I really only played to stay in shape, which I did. We're drinking out of my cup. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to Monday. I did get myself a decal printer, so I'm hoping to eventually, after this series, and now I'm just going to flip this top part in. After this series, I want to explore a few decal pieces. Another series. Now, this one, I did not take this cylinder all the way to the edge of the bat. So I'm gonna make a mental note on my next one. Don't take it all the way to the bat because that's gonna help me make a set because ideally people will hang multiple of these in their home. And I feel like I saw the VMFA shop just joined and the VMFA, we were supposed to have a pop-up together last weekend. It was like one of my highlights of 2020 that thanks to COVID never happened, but I'm really excited for next year's because I think we're just gonna postpone it until next year. So I can't wait, VMFA, you're like the best place in all of Richmond and all of the world. If you haven't been to the VMFA and you come to Richmond, it's a must. Now, I'm kind of trying to create also, because if you're just tuning in, I'm creating this wheel thrown part of a wall hanger, the circle part. And so this one, I did a little differently. I don't know. These might all be various. You know what? That's kind of fun too, to kind of keep it similar because they're all circles that maybe have different finishes. So stick around and we'll see throughout this night. Very beautiful, this mugs. Thank you. Now this is when you don't want to overlap. So I'm just going to support, rib, and then call it a day and then do another one. So support, rib, and I'm just making sure it's more of a flat edge on top. Rotate, 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 slow release, done. Don't overlap. I could do this though. I could take a, a wooden rib or even better, one of these guys, like a metal. And while it spins, just clean up a little bit right there. Right there. And that will help in the next step. Okay, so that's one of, I'd like to make a series. I think so, and then I'll hand build the wall pocket and I'll score and slip it. So the drying, timing the dryness of this is also gonna be important. All right, before I start another one, some of your questions, home studio must-haves. I think definitely bats. You need a bucket to put your water in, um, sponge, sponges. You need a wire cutter. I think a rib tool, and it also depends on what you're trying to make. If you're a wheel thrower, I would say these things. Um, I would say an array of trim tools. Things you, I do not have, things I do not have. A slab roller, don't have one. Would I like one? Yes. I do not have a pug mill. Would I like one? Maybe. Do I have one? No. I don't have multiple kilns. Would I like them? Yes. What else? I think it just depends on what you want to make, but I think, um, yes, a plaster. I have that. You need a, pla a place to recycle clay, a system. In fact, when you set up your home studio, I suggest you do a walkthrough of your space and plan out your entire throwing and trimming session. Like when you walk into the studio, where do you get your apron? Where do you get your clay? Where do you go to get your tools? Where do you store your work? Where is the plastic for when you need to wrap it? Where's your scrap pile? What's your recycle process? Where are your glazes? Where do you put your to be bisque fire? Where do you put your glaze? Like do a walkthrough of every bit of your process and make notes of the spaces that you need, the tools that you need, and go from that list. And just get like one thing at a time. You don't have to get the whole list at one time. Okay, let's make another one. Thank you for these questions. So here's another two pound ball of clay. 
same size bat, same same size, same size. And again, this is if the question came in about making multiples of the same. You want to start with the same amount of clay. The same size bat helps. And some people have tools to measure how wide or how tall your pot is. Or you can just kind of wing it. And when I do multiples, I allow myself an extra one or two. Oh, I just went black. I allow myself an extra one or two so that I can have a mess up. Whoop. So I'm going to cone this up and down. And again, as long as I keep my cone, I won't get the elephant trunk or the um, crater at the top, if you will. And again, that's just about keeping the cone. My hands are always connected. Rotate, rotate, rotate. We're going to put that on some merch. Thank y'all for tuning in. Happy Monday. I'm Molly Sanuar, coming to you live from Richmond, Virginia, where I am teaching social distance virtually. We're a semester class. My students have exams starting next week, so all of their work has to be glazed and finished by next Wednesday. And then it's winter vacation. And then in January, when they come back, they have to photograph their work update their websites, and then we're gonna celebrate all of their hard work. It's my favorite time of the year. Favorite time of every semester is this time right now. They're all independently working, getting their work finished, photographing, celebrating. And it's so fun to see their growth the whole time. One of my extra credits is if they do an after video, um, they have to record themselves throwing a cylinder. They do that like the very first assignment. It was their first time ever throwing video. And it was so funny because all their elbows, you know, they document like their elbows are flying. Hello, England. Thanks for, oh, Rachel, Pius. Oh my gosh, I love it when you tune in, Rachel. Because every time you tune in and say hello, I just dream about visiting you in England. <laughs> one day, one day. Man, I was talk about traveling. Last winter break, I was planning for this winter break to go travel somewhere fabulously. Nobody's traveling right now. And the COVID cases, according to people I know, are getting closer and closer. So, I also feel like people are getting more and more tired of staying at home, but it's just so important. It's just so important. Hello, Salzburg! An international crew. If you're just tuning in, I'm gonna try to make this cylinder a little bit wider than the last one. I'm just gonna make um, various cylinder forms to then sculpt a wall pocket onto. And you know what you also need to think about when you're creating is your kiln space. And these are going to take up a lot of flat kiln shelves. So that might not have been so smart to do a big batch at one time because I can only fit so many in a kiln. You mean you would pass up Ontario, Canada for England? Who said pass up? I will come to Ontario, Ontario, Canada as well. I will come wherever I invite it. Am invited. I mean, to travel and know someone, I think, is the best way to travel ever. Because then you get all the inside scoop. You know, when you travel by yourself, you could be two blocks away from something magical, but you don't know it because you've never been there. But if you travel with somebody who lives there, they're like, let me show you what you need to see while you're here. And I'm like, thank you. So having an inside source. So yeah, when COVID is over, I would love to travel to be, meet all of you. In fact, there was in the works of doing traveling workshops, which I got to go to LA a couple summer, summers ago, now two summers ago, and teach some workshops in LA with Lena of Members Only LA and Good Dirt LA. And that was so fun. All right, at this point, I'm just gonna put a rib on the outside and allow my inside hand to expand this circle even more because see this blue out here? I'm just gonna try to make this one as wide as I can. So I'm gonna really anchor up and push out. Sorry for the noise. I will take great care of you when COVID is over. Yes. All right, so, so far the trip is gonna be Peru, England, Ontario. I love how long this list is getting. The traveling throne of Molly. That's actually what I would like to do is a traveling throne of Molly. So I just ask that if you host me, that we can also do a live Throne of Molly at your studio in said country. So Rachel and Janet, would that work for y'all? If I did a Throne of Molly at your studio? This 
petal gets a little sticky. All right, I'm gonna support inside and just bend this lip over. And this is where I do wanna kind of control my speed, but this petal is a little sticky. And this is where I don't wanna over love, so I'm just gonna get right there, rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release, yeah, I'm over loving. Okay, see that little guy that's kind of annoying? I'm just gonna leave it, I'm just gonna leave it. See it? I'm sure it's bothering some of you too, maybe not. See it? You can't see it as much, I'm just gonna leave that. Because if I mess with it now, whoop, it's just going to want to collapse. So what I can do is let this dry up, put this back on the wheel, and fix that later. So see how this is going to become one of these? Oh, I just dropped some of the eucalyptus. So cheers. Happy Monday night. Thanks for tuning in. You're a teacher's aide. Oh, my gosh, I love teachers, especially teachers who do clay on the side. All right, so now what I'm kind of thinking, well, I'll do two more so I can have a set. And I, again, if you're, I, these are going to be a set. I weighed them all to two pounds. I'm kind of doing the same thing to each of them. Happy Monday. I love a Monday. Did that help you with the question on multiples? Weigh them and you do have to focus a bit. Like, I don't know if you saw the first one I did tonight. This is number three. The first one I did tonight, I did not pull as far out to the edge of the bat. The second one, I pulled it further out to the edge of the bat. Now, being aware that I did that, depending on how far out this one, they're either gonna be more alike or more different. And part of me wants to pull it further out just because I want a bigger diameter, but I should just keep it cohesive with the ones I've already made, you know? And I would love to see these in somebody's house as multiples. So yes, I kind of want, a, I definitely want a cohesive set. I want multiples, but then I'm also thinking of doing various sizes. Um, do some smaller ones. Sorry, this keeps dimming, and I don't know why, and I don't want to lose y'all. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Monday night. And also, I appreciate everyone who has joined me to talk live. I love talking live. Tonight, I did want to create, 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 and sometimes when I talk live, I get all over the place. So I'm opening up, paying attention to how close to the edge of the bat, right there, rotate, 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 slow release. That could have gone crazy if I just, you know, got to the edge and took my hand off. I am going to go ahead and clean up the inside because... As, I don't know if y'all just saw, but my studio was a wreck. It got like really dirty. I think that'll look amazing. I guess grouping of different sizes. Yes, big, small circles, all filled with different textures. But if you, it's kind of like a cook in the kitchen. If you clean as you go, you'll, it will be worth it in the long term. If this gets all dry and dusty later, and I didn't clean it now, it's more of a problem later. So this is like selfish work. I'm cleaning up now. And I can also really get in there and establish the inside. And give this a little squeeze, get some height. And again, once I get the thickness of the walls at the top, rotate, 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 slow release. Good morning from Sydney. Well, good after, good evening from Richmond, Virginia. Thank y'all for tuning in, and thank y'all for all the questions that came in. What was another one? Let's answer another one. Um, would you consider online workshops or classes live or pre-recorded? Yes, I really want to do some pre-recorded and some live. I love live interaction. I love talking clay, but I also want to have an option available where if the times don't work, you can just get the pre-recorded and have access to the option to the video and the knowledge there. Woo. Um, another question, where do I get inspiration from art or for art? Usually when I take a workshop, I come back inspired. Or if I travel, I come back with some new inspiration. So traveling and taking workshops, I'd say. Sometimes for my students. Does it have a base? Nope. All the way to the back. Great question. No bottom here. What is this? I'm so glad that y'all asked and that you joined. Welcome. This is what we're making on this Throne of Molly, episode 66. These wall hangers so I'm throwing 
these cylinder forms. Which one can I pull up here? Throw in the cylinder form, and later I'll hand build the base part of the wall pocket. And I did start by weighing these out to two pounds each so that I can do them semi-cohesively so that when they're out, they can be a set and be hung on the wall together. But then I'm also thinking about doing some smaller ones so you can vary the size, the diameter of them. So I was just talking about I'm going to pull it up vertically into a cylinder first and then flip over the lid. Awesome. Thank you. Traveling definitely inspires me. Yes. It's like you are in the moment traveling and you don't even realize sometimes the inspirations that you're going to get. I was looking at, you know how they give you flashback videos? One of when we were in Africa, when we were in Cape Town, Africa, we had this at the place we were staying did this like drum circle and they were just like, and so when I came back, I was so inspired. I did this whole plan for this really big piece by just kind of drumming the clay. And I feel like it was totally subconsciously inspired by my trip there. Ooh, the wall hangings look lovely. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Now that I have a cylinder, I'm going to try it. This one looks taller. That's okay. I'm just, the key here is I can't over love. So once I get it where I want it, I have to just slow release. Oops, and there's a hair. Okay, support underneath. Connect my hands when possible. Let my outside hand just kind of push the clay over. Trying to get there quickly and then kind of slow down. Now what I might do is put a rib on it, which will also help remove some of the slip, which makes it, okay, right there. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release, don't overlap. Don't overlap. Overloving is a real thing. Maybe one time right here. Maybe one more time to make it flatter on the top. Because I want it more horizontal than like, so I just need to rotate, rotate, rotate. Okay. Now, and then I can score and slip a wall pocket onto this. See, see where we're going here? See? I'm going to have to wrap these really well. How long do they sit until you remove them? Good question. I actually am going to have to really baby them because... I do want to get them trimmed. I might just hand trim them because I have to score and slip a handle pocket to them so they can't be too dry. I need enough moisture to score and slip. Oh my gosh, thank y'all for all these questions. I'm sorry I didn't read them faster. Are you bringing up the walls from pulling? Yes, squeezing from inside and outside. If you feel there are particles or hair in the clay, when you're almost done throwing, what do you do? Leave it. It won't break. Leave it. If, if there's a hair, especially, or a leaf, or a dead bug, where something gets in your clay and it's wet, and you go to put your fingers and pull out that thing, that hair, that bug, you just put your fingers all in it and ruined it. Whereas, if you just ignore it, especially if it's a piece of hair, and you just fire it, it's going to disintegrate in the count because it gets so hot. So if you get something like a piece of hair or a leaf, or a bug stuck in your clay, just ignore it. It's hard sometimes, but resist. Yes, I just took my first throwing class last week. How exciting. Oh my gosh, the first throwing class. So many questions to hear about how that went for you. I'm so curious what you accomplished, what you went after. Were you able to center? Or you, did you make a bowl? Did you make a cylinder? First pottery class is so exciting. Awesome, thank you, dead bug too. Yeah, let the dead bugs, just ignore dead bugs because they will just burn out. And if you try to get them, you're gonna add texture that you don't want. I have so many, oh my gosh, the screen just keeps going. And thank y'all for these questions. I just live for talking clay. Okay, where were we? I have so many pieces that I've made with hair stuck in it. Mm -hmm. How do you price your pieces? Great question. I kind of compare what else I'm seeing out there, what I paid for for mugs, at what level, and then consider the applications and techniques that I apply. Um, like w when I start doing decal mugs, they're gonna be even more expensive because they require even more materials and even more firings, even more processes. So I kind of have a base piece and then every other step goes up from that. But people have been asking about my big belly planters and I have not priced them yet because I really don't know how to price 
And sometimes I just have to compare, like if my mug is 65 and it's this big and then the planter is like this big and takes up that much room in the kiln, then the pieces have to even out by size and intricacies of the techniques. So good question. I would just start with what you notice um, your pain and for what quality that is. You know, I think my first mugs, my first mugs I was just giving away for free, still giving away some for free that don't make it. So that's where everybody should start is just giving them away. I feel like there's another good question that um, came in. Thank you so much. In my first throwing class, I managed a small cup and a small bowl. Came out all right, but tiny, wonderful, wonderful. Listen, when you're learning how to throw, remember that you're also going to have to learn how to trim. So if you've only thrown one piece and it took you like four balls of clay to throw one piece, remember that when you're learning how to trim, you're also going to need like four bowls to trim one. So throw a lot so you have lots to practice trimming. And trimming for me was really hard for me to figure out with my brain what was happening. Then I took a woodworking class and you go on the lathe. If you've ever taken a woodworking class or tri like done the lathe, that made trimming click for me. Woodworking, wood turning. All right, so this is getting too tall before I want it to. I'm trying, so I'm compressing it back down but I want this to go wider before I take it more tall. So I'm still in the giveaway stage. Yes, stay in the give I'm still in the giveaway stage too. Yes, my next class is trimming. So just be easy with yourself if when you trim that one piece, if it flies off, normal. If you trim through it, normal. If you trim the wrong part, normal. So if you only have one bowl, just be patient with yourself. Trimming. So I'm just opening this up more. Why always barefoot? Because my studio's in my house, and so I walk around my house barefoot, so I don't really want to put shoes on to go to my studio. It's just easier barefoot, and then I don't have to get any shoes or socks all clayified. And then when I leave, I wipe my bare feet on the wet towel that I spray the towel before I leave my studio. So bare feet is just more low maintenance, to be honest. But sometimes I see like my students at school want to go barefoot. I would never, ever go barefoot in a studio where I was not the only person working. I mean, if I shatter a piece of bisqueware, there are sh like I got a piece stuck in my foot one time and it was awful. And in a non-private studio, you don't know what's happened. You don't know what's been broken. You don't know what fell on the floor. You don't know what kind of cleanup job they did. So I would never go barefoot if it wasn't my own space where I know all the accidents that I've had happen. Thank you, great tip to know. Thank you, heart eyes back at y'all. Stoneware, yes, this is just a stoneware without grog. And you know, grog is just sand, it gives it more strength, which sometimes when I'm throwing, I'm like, why I should be using more grog? Because then I could do more with the clay, I could push it more has more strength to it. When is the right time to manipulate the pot into the belly shape? Great question. Not too wet, not too dry. It's like Goldilocks. You have to get it that just right. So you do have to be patient. And sometimes, depending on how your access is to the studio, that can be the hardest part. It's just timing the dryness of your piece. But that's when you can use like um, heating guns or torches. But if it's too wet, it will collapse. And if it's too dry, you just can't, it will just crack. So you kind of have to baby it. What is your wall coverings behind you? Penny tile. It's a penny tile wall. It's just penny tile. Yes, I wanted a white on white on white on white studio. So shout out to Rick. Rick, if you're watching, Rick made all of my dreams come true, and he hated me the whole, well, he didn't hate me at first, and then I think he hated me midway, and then I think now we're friends again, so, but he built this penny towel wall for me, and the whole studio. It looks like bubble wrap. It does look like bubble wrap. Okay, so now that I have my cylinder, and again, if you're just joining me, I'm working on creating 
the wheel thread and cylinder part of these wall hangings. And so I've, I've centered the clay. These are all two pounds. And I've just made a cylinder, and then I'm gonna just flip the edge over. Not, try not to overlap, and then I'll, this will be my fourth one. So then hopefully, I think I have a few more that hopefully then I can get a set of them. On my floor, oh. If you want to etch on your pottery, when is the right time to do it before, is it before trimming? Hmm, if you want to etch, so when I'm hearing you say etch, I'm imagining a bone dry piece and you're using like wax and then you're wiping off and wherever's not applied with wax would etch away. In that case, you'd want to do it when it's bone dry. But if you're talking about carving, then you probably want it at the dryness for trimming. That nice leather hard. If you try to trim or anything and the clay is still wet, it gets really gross and it gets messy. Ugh. The internet, I love it. It keeps going dark. Thank y'all for sticking around and enjoying me on this Monday night. I'm just gonna put a little rib right here. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release, don't over love. And now this will be another cylinder ready to receive a wall pocket that I'll, I'll score and slip on later. Eloise! Oh my gosh, thanks for saying hi, Eloise, my student. Eloise, and my neighbor. Look at when y'all tune in. It's lovely to watch. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you don't my, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do, well, we did four of those, so why don't we I'm gonna do two more. I was gonna say we'll switch gears to do some cylinders for big bellies. And for, for Christmas, I'm gonna make my sister, who I don't think watches anymore. Um, I have this ceramic piece in my bathroom that I put like the cloth towels in that need to be washed. And I put it in there because it has a crack in the bottom. It's this big cylinder form with a big crack in the bottom. So I kept it and I put it in the guest bathroom and then it looks so fancy because it's the ceramic trash can for your cloth um, napkins or towels after you wash your hands. And that's what she asked for for Christmas. So I'm going to at some point make a big ceramic vessel for a trash can for my sister. So thank you all for tuning in, especially my students who are tuning in. I love it. Coning up at the beginning we talked about getting the elephant trunk which Eloise and any of my students out there this was a new term that was brought to me I always say a crater at the top but the question was about this elephant trunk and I was like, what is the elephant trunk and then I, I think I realized it's if you ever lose your cone like right now you should just push to center because it's flat if you cone up from a flat surface you're always going to get Every time, you're, I call it a crater, but they were calling it an elephant's trunk, which I can kind of see. See, it's like an elephant's trunk. Ooh, you know. How do you take care of your back? My back, oh yeah, my back definitely gets, I, I need to stretch it more. Stretching, you got to. Um, do you always use your splash pan? Yes, unless my bat is too big. Then I have to take the splash pan off and then I make a huge mess everywhere. But the same idea of making something, something we can use, gift with your own hands. Yes, a handmade gift is the best. Okay, that trunk is so damn cute. All right, well, let's fix the trunk. At this point, if you have the crater or the elephant's trunk, don't keep going, don't keep coning up, and don't close it because then you'll have a big air bubble, and then you'll have to deal with that the whole time. So at this point, fix your issue. So I'm just gonna support and take my karate chomping right hand on top and push it back down and then angle it down. And there's my cone again. Then, as long as you have a cone, you're fine. You can cone up all day long. You won't get an elephant trunk if you have a cone. You'll only get the elephant trunk if you have a flat top and you go to cone up. So I hope that that helps. I'm gonna squeeze out this little issue at the bottom and then I'll answer another one of your, your questions that you sent in. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release. Clean these hands. This is so nice because it's December, so it's winter here in Richmond, Virginia. It actually snowed today. The last time I tried to do Throne of Molly while I was firing my kiln, it was so hot, I almost passed out. Right now, it's so hot, it feels so good. I do always use my splash pan, unless the bat is too big, and then I don't use my splash pan. 
and then it just makes a mess everywhere. Um, how has COVID affected your business, the pros and the cons? Hmm, how has COVID affected my business? So when it first happened, I was like, oh, we're going to go online. We're going to go virtual. You've never seen snow? You're like the third person to message me that today on Instagram. That you've never seen snow. Where are you from? Three dollar chain. That you've never seen snow. Where are you from? I wonder. These people without seeing snow. Um, so if you are just tuning in, after I just showed you how not to make the elephant trunk I'm making these cylinder parts for a wall pocket I don't know if you saw these on my story the cylinder part the round part then I'll hand build the pocket later oh Los Angeles you're right you probably have never seen snow but guess what if you're in LA I wonder if you're near members only or um, good dirt LA I went there for some workshops two summers ago. Oh my gosh, my earrings. Thank y'all. I meant this question came out too. Like, where are my earrings from? I don't know if you can see them. Erica Beeswax. I don't know if she's watching right now, but Erica Beeswax and I have become Instagram friends. And she makes these awesome earrings because they're light. They're big. They're colorful. And you just Venmo her and it's all included with shipping and everything. It's so easy. Um, so thank you for loving these earrings. I wish I could say I made them, but I found them on the internet and I love them. What are the dimensions of my studio? All right, this question has come up a few times and I have not taken the time to actually measure it. So maybe I will remember to do that for next time. If you're tuning in, I'm just opening the cylinder up to the edge of the bat. Now I'm gonna pull it to make a cylinder and then I'm gonna flip over the top. Look, that is a beautiful piece. Oh, the finished one. I hope you're probably talking about because this one does not look glamorous, but I love that you use the word glamorous. You need to come to Ontario. Okay, yes. Uh, listen, if y'all invite me, I am coming to have a local tour guide. Um, count me in. Count me in, especially if I've never been there. So I've opened this up wide. Now I'm going to connect my hands and just squeeze this. Get my height, get my thickness. Evenly distributed from the bottom to the top. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Ooh, this is, the funny thing is in Sydney, it's peak of summer in December. Oh shoot, it just went black again. Guys, my goodness. Okay, December, when I was first moved here, I couldn't understand how people could celebrate Christmas without winter. That's such a good, interesting, Perspective, yes, to celebrate Christmas in the summer. I have done that, I think, one time, and it was interesting, but I enjoyed it. In fact, the older I get, the more I would enjoy to be in somewhere warm for, for Christmas. Does your studio have heat and running water? Yes. No. Okay, so heat and air conditioning. The heat right now is my kiln. It's firing. I do have running water, but do I get nervous that I clog the drains like all the time? But I do think running water is a must. It's not a must for a studio. I mean, I have worked in studios without running water, so I'd say running water is a luxury. You can still make a studio without running water. Don't let that stop you. Which, another question. Oh, I didn't answer the COVID. How did COVID affect the business, pros and cons? So I think I need to do more online workshops. So that that's the pro and the con, is that I know what I need to do, but I haven't really done it yet. Peru, it's Christmas and summer. And you were one talking about you had never seen snow. Some people were just tuning in that they've never seen snow. Oop, okay, did you see what just started happening? I had it on full speed, I wasn't looking, and it just started going, woo, speed kills. That's another one I'd like to put on a t-shirt, but I don't want that to be taken the wrong way, but speed and ceramics kills. You go too fast. So you have to watch your speed. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Be patient. Get where you're going. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And then don't overlap. Slow release. This one's a little taller than the others. That's okay. Boop. So see what's happening here? The back of a wall pocket happening. 
I'm going to put this one here because they're taking up all over. Okay, I have another two pounder. But let's switch gears, shall we? Below the equator is where you are. Yeah, so y'all are summer Christmas. We are winter Christmas. Cheers. And if you're just tuning in, happy Monday night. I'm Molly Sanders. Episode 66 of Throne of Molly. How do you keep drains from clogging? I have a grease trap that I got from a restaurant store. And so far that has really helped me because of the way it catches and underneath the plumbing, it goes through the trap. I have had to unclog that part a couple times. It's really gross. But then it was draining again. So I have a trap. You do want to figure out something if you're doing indoor plumbing. Because I cannot imagine having to unclog like the main thing, which I feel like I'm gonna figure that out one day. I don't I don't want to, but um, how do you stay on schedule as far as firings? Do you make deadlines for yourself? So this year I did not really set hard deadlines. COVID, we're in a pandemic, so I have been really easy on myself. Last like holiday season, I definitely count it backwards. And like when I teach my studio classes, we count backwards from the last firing. You have to make a schedule if you are on a time constraint because firings take so long, turnover takes a while, you can't just do it all in one day. So you definitely have to make a schedule depending on your end outcome. But I have allowed myself during this time to just make when I can instead of like feeling guilty if I'm not making every moment, every moment, blah, 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 trees, 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 you know? And it's been so much more enjoyable. And I've said this before, but I've noticed that my customers, people who are supporting me, I feel like are oftentimes buying for themselves. Sometimes it's for a gift, but I feel like those people who are buying for themselves, they're gonna be excited to buy regardless if it's holiday season or January or February because they like to treat themselves. And I am for that. I am for that, which I am planning to, I got myself a decal printer and I would like to for Valentine's Day, I think offer some kind of personalized decal heart something. So that I would have to count backwards from. Are you at about 50% speed from when you are centering? Yes, I kind of do gauge the speed depending on how what the clay is telling me and what I need to do to control the clay. So that was not full pace probably. And this wheel doesn't go as fast as I'd like. I'd like a little bit more speed to be honest. I'd like a little bit more speed. Two things which I observed. One, my pots were tiny and almost thick bottoms. How do you make your bottoms pots thin or lighter any bigger? So if it's thick on the bottom, you can either open lower to the bat and pull it open and then you'll take some of that thickness from the bottom and you can move it and have more to get height or width because you've taken it from the bottom. Or you can just leave it on the bottom and then trim it off. I'm more of a trimmer myself, but if you're trying to get more volume out of the amount of clay that you're starting with, then I would open a little lower, not too low because you don't want to go all the way through the clay to the bat. So you definitely, I like to leave some thickness so I have something to trim a foot. You know, I like, and some people judge me for that. Some people are like, you are trimming off way too much. Not even that they judge me, but they're like, why would you do that? Then you have all that clay that you've wasted. And I'm like, I can recycle those trimmings and I like my recycled clay a lot. I like to throw with my recycled clay, it feels good. And it's just the process I've started. Some people I know don't wanna trim, so they throw it as thin as possible so they have left to trim, less to trim or they just throw their trimmings away when they're done. But yeah, so you can just throw it thinner. And what you can also do to know your thickness is stop the wheel completely, take your needle tool and poke it to the bottom. And when you pull it out, you'll see how thick that clay was. Sometimes you're like, whoo, it's really thin. Like you, you can hear the bat and then you're like, oh no, there's no bottom. Like I do that with my coffee mugs that I don't want to trim all the time. I'm like, oh, they're really thin. And then you wire cut them why this keeps starting off um yeah I love trimming too hello from Brazil guys happy Monday thanks for tuning in which if you are tuning in cheers and take a look this is what we're working on 
We're making the circular wheel throwing part of these wall pockets. And these actually aren't going to require much trimming, if any, at all. We'll see. Oh, there's also a question about um, beginning home studio. Explain kiln cones, please. That's what they said. Kiln cones. So, for example, you'll hear some people say, oh, I fired a cone six. So, cone refers to a temperature, and you have bisque firing, which is cone 04. You have glaze firing, which could be, here's the tricky part, you could be 06 if you're low fire. You could be cone 6 if you're stoneware. You could be cone 10 if you're high fire. And they're all just different temperatures. So the problem is, which I know this because I experienced it, if you fire cone 06 to cone 6, you'll melt everything down. The whole thing will just melt down like a volcano erupted and then settled in its permanent sludge on the bottom of your kiln. I know because when I worked in elementary school, usually elementary schools use cone 06. They use earthenware because usually I think you can just get brighter colors. I don't really know why they use earthenware because now you can get bright colors for stoneware. So we made these clay trophies. My third graders in elementary school, they learned how to pinch pot for the trophy, coils for the handles, score and slip, all the things on these good citizen trophies, so we were working it into the SOLs, because you know, the public schools are all about SOLs, and we had to learn about being a good citizen and scoring and slipping, so we did all the things, and they all made these adorable clay trophies for being a good citizen, and I hit cone six instead of cone 06. So here are the temperature differences. Cone 06 is 1828, cone six is 2232. So like a 400 degree difference, melted the entire, all those clay trophies that were so precious, melted down, I opened it up, it looked like a volcano had literally erupted, like lava, like brown sludge, permanent, ruined the whole kiln. But when I poke, but when you poke that needle to check the base, would that not leave a pinhole? Well, if it does leave a pinhole, like if I were to take this and go, boop, let's see how thick that is, put my finger there, pull it out, that's how thick my clay is. That hole, I'm not too worried about that. I can just compress that. It's a good question. Watch this explode now because I put a hole in it. Just kidding. No, it's fine. The studio where I'm going to learn pottery only uses earthenware. So sometimes a student will say, hey, I found this clay. Can I come fire it? And now that I've melted down a kiln, I'm like, well, what, what temperature is that clay? Is it a stoneware? Is it an earthenware? Because if it's an earthenware and we put it to a higher temperature, it's literally going to melt down literally melt down. Now I will say the thought that year, the county was really good and got me a brand new kiln and I ended up getting a grant to get this big amazing new kiln for that school and all this clay equipment was magical. And then I got my new job as a ceramics teacher. So it's kind of like a job lottery situation that I was so excited to get the new job. Even though I had just upgraded my previous school. Your school uses earthenware. Yeah, so it's important to know what kiln you fire to. If it's if there's an O in front of it, it's a lower temperature. 06, 04, gold luster, 018, decal, 06. Usually, always check your own instruction manual. The cone is important. And a little bit of degrees goes a long way. Sometimes mine will miss fire and it will have like missed it by a few degrees. And that could mean that the glazes aren't as shiny as they should be, or who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna straighten this up. Vertical, vertical, rotate, 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 slow release. My little sludge pile. From a usability perspective, is stoneware stronger and longer lasting? Yes. The higher you fire to, the stronger the clay is. So there, I had a question about if my pots would um, withstand the winter. No. If they were cone 10, yes. But check with your people, like your clay. Um, how are there so many different types of clay? How do you know which type? Your clay stores will tell you there's so many different types of clay from where they're harvested on the earth. And like porcelain is from the highest place on the mountain. I think, don't quote me on any of this, but the earth, the earth produces different types of clay depending on where you resource it from on the earth. Nice, I think porcelain is fired up. Yes, porcelain is the most strongest clay ever. I've never used it. But I, I 
I talked to, um, who was it? One of you joined me on Instagram Live when I just went live in the middle of the week. And we talked, or was it last week? And we talked about porcelain. Do you, do you recommend using a cone pack when firing in an auto kiln? Okay, this is when I hate to answer y'all's questions because the answer should be, yes, use a cone pack because then you can test it, you can recreate your results, you can really learn what's happening in there. You can see why your successes are happening, you can see why your failures are happening. It's like good documentation. Yes. Do I ever do it? Have I ever done it? No. Like one teacher who was teaching me how to fire kilns had a whole notebook and she documented everything when she hit start when it did this when it did that and she had pages and books filled of every firing she had ever done different types of you know to each their own more power to you if you're that kind of potter i am not doesn't bring me joy another one all right we're getting all set going the next up y'all will see i'll be doing the the hand building of the of the wall pocket itself. All right, so this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So out of these seven, I can at least get a match of two, right? You know, if you need a match, it's sad. You gotta make some extras. And I'm just kidding. I hope I get I make more than just two. But for the point of it, you know, if you want to, you should make lots of extras. Hard to throw. Hard to throw porcelain. How is it drier? I've never thrown porcelain. I've never have. I've had students who have. I've talked to people who have. Have these hands ever thrown with porcelain? I haven't. So I don't know. I hear it's like cream cheese. I hear instead of water, you should use slip. One day. It's like painters that have never used oil paints. I've never used oil paints. I've taken lots of drawing and painting classes. I've never used an oil paint. I was an art major. I've never used oil paints. Which I have that conversation with people a lot about being like going to art school or not, especially because I teach high schoolers. And I would definitely say you do not need an art degree to be an artist, especially in the 21st century. But if college is free for you, you go as long as you can because it is fun. It is really fun. Are you going to throw a wall pocket base on the wheel? No, I'm going to hand build the wall pocket part. I did think about throwing it, but I, I think I'm going to do a slab, roll it around a cone. I just need to get some newspaper or something to like stuff it. What are you drink, drink big today? What am I drinking? I am just drinking a little white wine out of Lizzo. Lizzo. Me too. I went to art school and never used oils. Ah. What are your favorite thing, favorite times of day to do pottery? Well, I would say the end of the day, the beginning or end of the day usually are my favorite times. Usually in the middle of the day, I'm letting a pot dry. Like I like to wake up, throw something, let it dry. And then at the end of the day, finish it. Like that's like the best day. Like a good summer day, you know, it's light all day long. Like right now it's winter, so it's dark at like four o'clock. But my favorite day would be a summer day. Get up early, throw a bunch of pots, go do some stuff, work in the garden. And then by that evening, I can trim. In the winter, I'm usually wrapping things and maybe the next day I'll finish them. Um, how about another question? How do you decide on the weights of your clay for specific pieces? So how do you determine the size, amount of clay for specific pieces? Before I answer that, before this one goes, I'm an engineer, but I love all forms of art, especially pottery. I'm taking a work break to exploring. I wish I was in the US, where are you? So many artists like you that I would love to meet and learn from. Well, I will come to you, you know? I would love to do a traveling Throne of Molly. So after COVID, let's talk. Throne of Molly, world tour. We can make t-shirts. That'd be so fun. I have to say, I really hate cleaning up. How can't be less messy? How can you be less messy on the wheel? Hi, Sydney. How often do you clean your wheel? All right, these cleaning questions. Y'all just wait. I just did a time-lapse video cleaning my studio 
and this time I definitely went longer than I should have. I should have cleaned it sooner than I did, but sometimes things happen. I like to do a throwing session and then clean up all the wet stuff, then trim, and then clean that while it's dry, and then throw, clean when it's wet. So if I was gonna throw tonight and tomorrow, I won't clean it, but if I'm just throwing tonight and then I'm gonna trim tomorrow, then I would like to clean it between wet and dry sessions. Does that always happen? No, it doesn't. Okay, wait, you're in Sydney. And so, okay, we've got Sydney. Guys, it's a world tour. Sydney, Peru, Ontario, England. That seems like a world tour. Summer 2021. Do we think we'll be ready for a world tour that soon? Y'all let me know. We will see. That would be amazing. Throwing with Molly, World Tour 2021. Oh my gosh. Do you always use an auto program on the kiln? Yes, yes I do. A lot of people like to program and do magic with their kilns in their glazes, I don't. Brazil, Sweden, guys! World Tour, World Tour. I'm here for it. I am here for the world tour. But if I come to your city, I need you to show me the best view. These are the things I like when I travel, the best view. So if you have stairs and like a, a mountain, I like a good view. The best food and restaurant, like, like fun different food, like artsy food. Contemporary art museums. Oh my gosh, it's already almost six o'clock. How did the hour go by? Guys, thanks for tuning in. Let's talk about next week, episode 67. So tis the seasons, it is the holidays. I just asked my family if they have a request for something they'd like me to make, what would they like it to be? So my one sister we talked about, she wants a trash can. My mom says she wants a swirl planter, which mom, I have some, I need to show you this. My other sister says she wants two big lamps for her bedside tables. Okay, I've never done lamps, but my friend Augie, Lindsay, Ware Clay, she does lamps. So I'm going to ask her to join me next Monday to talk all things lamps. She doesn't know this yet, and I don't know that she's watching, but Lindsay, Augustine, Ware Clay, I'm coming for you, and I hope that you'll be available to join me. I hope y'all will be available to join me. We'll hopefully do um, lamps. That's the plan for now. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. I love it when y'all send me questions too. Let me see if there's any more that I can answer real quick that I didn't. Um, where'd they go? Oh, tips for making using colored slips and mason stains. If you have a white clay body and you make slip and sprinkle in your mason stains, if you want to recreate the same color, measure it. Weigh the amount of, of mason stain and the amount of slip or just have fun and sprinkle it in. So if you want to recreate, measure. Cone up looks like an elephant trunk. We talked about that. Have you ever done any artist residencies? No, I have not. Uh, we talked about where I get my inspiration from when I travel, when I take classes, what I consider online workshops. Okay, I think we answered these. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I will see y'all next week, episode 67 of Thorn of Molly, where we're going to do lamps. So wish me luck. I've never done a lamp. Maybe I'll end up loving lamps. I don't know. I've been resisting them for a long time, but next week, Monday night, 5 p.m., tell your friends. I joined by chance and I loved it. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for the invite. I really hope we do a world tour, world tour 2020. See y'all next Monday. Thanks for tuning in.